again, if we can get the, the model over, we don't, don't want to, by any means, overwork it, but to try to understand, these are the solid rocket boosters, this is the main fuel tank, shuttle rides on top of it. Now, on the videotape, in the slow motion, it appears that the first explosion you can see on that slow motion videotape is at around the right-hand side of one of these solid rocket boosters. But you may want to keep in mind that on these solid rocket boosters, the bu booster fuel, which we've been talking about, is a rubber-like substance. That's the fuel that makes these rockets go. Now, it's uh, the rubber-like substance which forms the fuel for these solid rocket boosters. Uh, you couldn't make that explode on its own if you hit it with a, with a sledgehammer repeatedly. So that may be something you want to keep in mind. That this is a rubber-like substance in here which wouldn't explode on its own. It has to have some source of ignition. Now, you can speculate the rest of the day on what some source of ignition for, for exploding this uh, solid rocket uh, fuel might have been. And then there was also the idea that the liquid fuel in the main fuel tank, there was, Bruce Hall talk, spoke earlier about liquid fuel in the main fuel tank, uh, which is the liquid hydrogen, at least. It's liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. The liquid hydrogen, at least, is highly explosive. And some observers looking closely at the slow motion of the videotape believe that the explosion may have, in fact, began somewhere in this area on one of the seams of the large tank. Now, Bruce Hall, uh, if you're at Cape Canaveral and still reading us, uh, this, uh, this is what we've been trying to pass along, uh, the uh, information that the fuel in the solid rocket boosters is that rubber-like substance, and it couldn't ignite at its own, while the fuel in the big tank certainly could ignite on its own. Stan, you're correct on that, that the fuel aboard that main fuel tank is highly volatile. It is liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen. It is so volatile that it has been one of the crucial parts in the development of the shuttle program. In the Russians, in their attempt to develop a similar shuttle program, one of the reasons they have, many scientists say that they have fallen far behind the U.S. in the development of a shuttle program, is that they were never able to master that liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen problem because of the high uh, possibility of uh, an explosion. One thing that we should understand, as you have mentioned several times, Dan, the main tank does fall off over the Indian Ocean. Now, the way that it falls off is that it is secured to the shuttle by several bolts, and those bolts are, it comes off by a small, almost like a, an explosion. It's a small explosive device, and at the time when the main fuel tank is supposed to separate from the shuttle, those bolts, uh, the pyrotechnics, they would say, explode, and that sends the main fuel tank away and down from the shuttle. One of the things that several people are looking at here at the Kennedy Space Center. And I emphasize, they're looking at all kinds of things. But one of the things they're looking at to see if there could have been a possible premature explosion or explosive device on the main fuel tank. And one of those bolts prematurely exploded and therefore setting off the explosion, which the big massive explosion, which we saw with the main fuel tank. Going back in history, Dan, one of the things uh, back in the very early part of the space program in the Mercury capsule with Gus Grissom when he went into the water, one of those bolts exploded after he hit the water and it made it very difficult to uh, rescue Gus Grissom. There was an inquiry afterward looking into that. There was no conclusive evidence coming out, but apparently one of those bolts, uh, according to many people in the space program, exploded at the time of the impact there. So that is just one of several things that they're looking at closely here at the Kennedy Space Center and at Johnson Space Center in uh, Houston. But it is a possibility and they're looking very closely at that explosion with the main fuel tank in mind. Along the seams yeah. at the point where the fuel tank is directly attached to the shuttle Challenger. Bruce, uh, I'm sorry to, sorry to interrupt, but uh, one thing occurs to me, and we want to underscore it, if so. Uh, one, of the de one of the reasons given for the last delay, that is the delay before this morning's icicle delay, of this space uh, challenger was uh, said to be some difficulty with bolts, was it not? Yes, we had uh, several problems with bolts yesterday, but that was a bolt in the hatch, the door of the shuttle, and that should not be connected with this whatsoever, the hatch being uh, away from where the point of difficulty occurred today. There also was this morning a delay of approximately one hour in the launch with what they called a faulty gauge. And there was some report that that could be involved in a bolt 
but even if it was a bolt, it's more likely in the gauge area and would not have been directly related, according to all the evidence that we have now, directly related to the explosion itself. Bruce, I think at this point uh, we, we should take another look at the launch this morning and exactly what happened. And if I may ask you to keep your microphone open and uh, uh, come along with me with the description, I'm particularly interested in your observation that at the very moment of liftoff this morning, that it looked, it appeared to you and to some other observers that perhaps the shuttle was getting off a little bit slower than it usually does. Four, three, I have two, seen more than 20 one, launches of the space shuttle so far. And it appeared that this one almost hesitated on the pad, sort of the way the old uh, Apollo program did. And then it went up and several people around me said, that's a different manner than we've seen it go before and it appeared to be a little bit slower. It turned over as it normally does with the shuttle on the bottom side. And at this point, everything appeared to be okay, but we were still looking at each other and saying, what about that liftoff? It was a little slower to our observation anyway. Engines beginning throttling down now at 94%. Normal throttles uh, for most of the flight, 104%. And at this point, NASA has said on a preliminary Full report, everything was normal. 65% shortly. And the problem comes in just a few seconds there Engines when NASA gives the order to uh, throttle up. Three good fuel cells, three also, we need to look closely to see if there is some fog near the end Velocity of the tank just before the explosion, Altitude 4 which would er indicate a, distance, three miles. a problem a little earlier than uh, the actual explosion. Engines throttling up, three engines now at 104 percent. This is a go at full throttle. throttle. Now there's a, just before the explosion, Dan, there appeared to be almost a fog or some of the smoke up beside the shuttle itself, on the, actually beside the main engine tank, the fuel tank, and that is unusual. You normally do not have anything like that occur. The first thing that most people would look at at that is for some type of a leak, a possible fuel leak, a possible uh, hole someplace. Well, Bruce, uh, we want to take a look now at the slow motion videotape. This was the smoke and debris coming down. This is the slow motion. And let's describe what's happening here. This is just before the explosion. Right there, Dan, just before the explosion, you see on the top of your screen, it appears that the uh, flames to the left of your circle, you also see some flames, and that is just before the explosion. And that is something that indicates to some people at NASA that there may have been some type of a fuel leak. Now that still indicates that the explosion itself occurred with either the main fuel tank or from something created by the solid rocket boosters, as we have been saying. Bruce? And that far fireball there is the main fuel tank. Bruce, no one can forget how explosive that liquid hydrogen fuel is in the big tank, that the shuttle's uh, own three main engines, the one tucked uh, right in the tail of the shuttle itself, operate off that liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen. And you mentioned uh, the, the possibility, there are all kinds of possibilities, but certainly any leak, uh, anything untoward having to do with that liquid hydrogen could spell trouble uh, in a hurry, uh, particularly during the critical stages of launch, as, as was the case this morning. That is true that the liquid hydrogen and the liquid oxygen are extremely volatile. And that is something that the space program had mastered. And we indicated that the Soviet Union had reason their program had fallen so far behind because they had not been able to. Well, Bruce, and one of the, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. One of the reasons that they want to look closely at that tape, and the NASA officials are huddled looking at this tape, they want to see what those flames are that occurred just prior to the explosion itself and see why there, there, were explain, there were some, appeared to be flames out of where the normal flame would be from a normal shuttle launch. Bruce Norman Mailer, the author, wrote about the United States mission to the moon. My recollection is he called it the fire to the moon, as in writing fire to the moon. And it was so easy to forget when things were going all that well with NASA and all the space shuttle flights that those astronauts, whether they're many or few, what they are doing, in fact, is riding fire. They were riding fire. When you leave that launch pad, it is a ball of fire, and you are riding on that fire as you go into orbit. 
it is an extremely dangerous situation. The astronauts knew that. They trained for this. And a lot of people said, some of these people do not appear to be very emotional about this very dangerous ride that they're going to be taking. But they were trained that they had so much work to do in that first two minutes that they were to concentrate entirely on that job of theirs during that first two minutes, and they were extremely busy. And the lack of emotion that some people have seen it was actually false because afterwards when he'd come down and he would talk to these astronauts and get them aside, they would say, it was a very emotional moment. But I had a job to do and I was performing that job and that's the only reason it did not appear to be very emotional to the others who were watching at the time. But it is a ride on a ball of fire into orbit.